and and <laughs> under my opinion, pretty, I, Ubuntu has more stuff in the critical path to log in than it should. And you'll notice that if seriously, I mean, if you're swapping on a system and your load is high, you'll see why is this taking so long to put a dollar sign in front of me? You know, so I can so I can try to fix this. Yes. <laughs> um, so this was actually, I, I have done, in my experience of, and I have way too much experience with shell programming and trying to do things in uh, small environments. Um, I've written a, in an ramfs similar to Debian's, the, you know, an ramfs builder and you know, a root finder and all those sorts of things. And typically, and then I've also done Cirros, which is this tiny little basically in it, in an ramfs that acts as a cloud image so that you can test OpenStack and test different things by booting something up, SSHing in and verifying it's there. Um, and so this this came out of me actually trying to do um, to to do uh, to do something in Cirros. And I, I'm just I want to make it really fast and to not be annoying to people because the whole intent of it of Cirros is boot it, verify it's there, and, and kill it. You want to do as many as you can, and you want them to happen super fast. It, it doesn't serve much purpose outside of that. But anyway, um, so I had a, I was looking for, we wanted to see how fast you, or we wanted to try to get some information out of dmessage, that the kernel prints and it goes in its ring buffer and want to get it out. So um, we, if somebody wrote something, I said, well, that's going to be slow. Um, and I tried to make it faster, and let's see, how is that? Let's see. Oh, let's see, yeah, go down here further. So, this was, the first one was just, D, was a D message piped into grep. Um, So it was something like that, yeah. Maybe he went from bar log, says log, or something, and grab that, type it into awk. And I said, well, you don't need to do the grab because you have awk, and you can do the shell parsing, or you can do the, you can, you know, do the, the regular expression, yeah, matching in awk. Um, and it turned out, I was, I was really surprised at the results on this, um, because it turns out that grep is really fast. <laughs> and so grep beat in this when I just did pure awk, which I which incurred only one fork, um, versus let's see line fifteen there. Um, grep piped into awk was actually faster than just awk. So the cost of the fork was negligible compared to how much better grep was at just doing the regular expression matching. Wow, it's kind of things that you you find that are. You, that I, most of the time I basically avoid for. And on Linux, this is the case. I suspect if you ran this on any other Unix, you'd see inverted results. That fork, because fork is so fast on Linux compared to AIX and or compared to other Unix. BSD. I suspect that it's not as well optimized on anything other than Linux. If you. And so I think a lot of people get to the, you see a lot of people's shell scripts that they did on Linux and they fork, 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 fork. And they don't realize the cost of that because Linux made it magic. And if they ran it elsewhere, you would be, you would like mm -hmm. watch, you would be, it would be so much slower. Um, anyway, so let's see, go on. So even, even bash is, is pretty fast to start up, and especially on Linux, the likely the fact is that, for better or for worse, bin bash and bin sh are probably never leaving the file system cache. They are always there, um, and their their libraries are always going to be loaded. Um, so yeah, so the reason you you care about that overhead is because if your system load is 200 and you're trying to figure out what's going on, it matters. Um, tab completion is another thing where people, where you may, I don't know, 
there are some very slow tab completion programs that you may have run, run into. If, you, if you're typing something, you get tab tab, and, and it just sits there. What's going on? There are tab completion programs that are, you know, in, that are doing hundreds of forks and are just doing poor programming to get there. And if you improve those things, you're, you're, you won't be annoyed by tab completion as much. <laughs> um, it's just lots of little things where you know you you end up doing you end up doing something thousands of times, and it didn't seem like a big deal when something happened a couple times. But um, scale comes into play. And then boot time. Um, I was surprised that I had seen this before, and I wasn't really surprised because I've done a lot of Enigram or Fest programming. Um, in a cloud image, now this is a very simplistic world where basically <coughs> I know what root is, we're just going to find the, the root device and mount it. I, I did a replace of SBIN and it with a program that just said echo what PID, or you know, they create a PID and saw what number it was. That number was 180 before SBIN and it comes out of the actual actual root. So during the Init Ramifest, we've worked 180 times. Um, so that, you know, by my little test there, that 180 forks is 180 milliseconds. And if you can get rid of those sorts of things, shell programming can help you and you can do more with less. Um, and by the time you've gotten to rc.local, you know, I was at 1,059 forks. So <laughs> roughly you know, a full second of boot to rc.local is spent Forking, which is <laughs> pretty fun, kind of embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's actually, you know, that that is the kind of thing that drives somebody to make Linux fork just stupidly, amazingly fast. I mean, you, you could not accomplish if yeah. <laughs> you'd see that else. You'd see that on another Unix, and it'd be so bad that you you'd write it better. I guess is what amount to. <laughs> Um, why else would you want you want to write something in shell? A lot of times I do things like this. Um, this is just kind of a blog post I write, but you know I think documentation makes sense, especially well done. Or if you're writing things in shell, or if you're if you're writing things and you're expecting your users to to um, to interact with a shell anyway, little bits of shell programming kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, here I, I use time format from the bash shell. Not a lot of shell there actually, but it, where, but you know some places it, it makes sense to to do it and it and it fits well and then you can say you know grep and different things. And it, it, it demonstrates you know it is self-documenting I guess in a lot of ways. It allows you to easily show somebody how to do something. Um yeah why else? Because bin, bin sh is ubiquitous. I mean, you find it on Open OpenWRT. You find it, I mean, really everywhere. The the thing that got me to using to writing shell scripts. I started when I was in college writing Perl, and I was just amazed at how little, how how much function you could get out of Perl in so little, right? And then. I came to a place where I was needing to interact with something that just had BusyBox and there was no user bin Perl. And so I, I, I learned how to use what's usually built into BusyBox, which is like awk and said and fairly limited on Yeah. Okay. And and I realized that well you can actually accomplish most of what I was doing in Perl in SH awk and said and outside of hashes you can you can get by and then I just start so I stopped using Perl and only start using SH and then it's a hard and once you get well enough versed in what you're doing it's hard to justify learning anything else. <laughs> but so um, is from what you're saying though there's not a big difference hit between Bash and SH that um, it's it's not it's not terribly significant. It is significant. I mean, it was it was in that thing, you know, twice as slow, right? It, <laughs> that is significant. And if you do something thousands of times, you'll notice 
you'll notice that thing, but just bringing it up was twice as slow. And then the, the general interpreter is probably slower too. But, and it's, it's a more complex language that allows you to do, so there's more, mm -hmm. the, the interpreter is more complex. Um, so the next part is turning your shell, your shell script into a shell program. I had a friend, at, a colleague at IBM who, he, he wrote a, uh, a build tool in shell in bash and, and he was annoyed that people would call it a bash script because he seemed to think that the, the word script seems to have a connotation to it that says this is just a, you know, this isn't really well done. And so he, he implied it was a bash program. All of his documentation said, you know, it's a bash pro, a program written in bash. Um, and so I, I, I kind of take that and moving from what you consider a script to a program. And I, I do see the word script as being derogatory. It's weird. Um, so first, put a lot of links in here so I could go to other things, but then they don't work in browser mode. Really. Um, let's see. Programs have usage was something. I mean, if the first thing you do if you run a program and you you know you want to type minus minus l. If you're writing a shell script, even if, oh, no matter how trivial it is, if you expect someone else to use it or even yourself tomorrow, usage is helpful, right? You mm -hmm. you <laughs> it's so you, so nice to run a program with minus minus l and see something because you're just not going. It's so much faster to comprehend than when you have to open it up and read source code. Um, you actually want to use it as a tool. So put usage in your um, programs. Always do the, the thing. I, I always do it like that, that format, which is um, yeah. And then using cast, the, the here document shell to do that. Um, let's see. This is, I use this thing called new script. I mean, every time I wrote a, write a program, because I so many times write, write that, and started from scratch. Every time I'd write one and not use a template like this, a couple days later, I'm like, why didn't I use that template? <laughs> <laughs> I to, then I end up rewriting the thing or adding it to it 